Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Nomadic Therapy. I am here today for another story time. Y'all are liking my stories, y'all. I have a lot of stories because I done been through a lot in life. And my stories don't have any rhyme or reason in the order that I'm telling them. Sometimes I be doing things and something comes to my mind that reminds me of a certain situation. So then I'm just going to do my story times like that, y'all. So if you are subscribed to my other channel, Vanessa's Van Life Journey, and you like my story times, come over here, subscribe to this channel. This channel name is Nomadic Therapy because... It's meant to be therapeutic and it's meant to be helpful. It's meant to be encouraging and it's meant to be motivational. So if you like my story times and you are watching me on Vanessa's Van Life Journey, make sure you subscribe to this channel right here, Nomadic Therapy. This is where the story times are going to be going down, y'all. I still might tell a few story times on Vanessa's Van Life Journey, but this is where the story times are going to be going down. So, y'all, this is a story all about how I met a preacher. Y'all going to find out why. I am celibate, why I am single, why I don't want to be married, why I'm through with men. Girl, when every man that you meet try to take your life, <laughs> when every man that you meet try to take your life in some shape, form, or fashion, can't say it. Can't take no for an answer, become a stalker. Become a hater of your life and try to ruin other relationships that you are in because they still want you? Girl, it's time to just leave men alone. So this probably going to be, girl, this situation with this particular individual probably going to be a part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, part six, part girl. It's probably going to, this was a lot. So I was about 19, 20 or 21. I don't even remember. I was young. I, if you guys do not know, I only have one child and he is a boy and I only had one child and he was young and I can't remember how old he was, uh, because that would have determined my age. So I was between 19 and 21. I, I say 21, but I was probably younger than 21. So I met this pastor through a weird situation that I don't want to talk about. Because then it would put too much personal information out there about myself. But I met this uh, pastor through this weird way. And he seemed to be a nice guy and he just started talking to me and then he invited me to his church. So out of an innocent way that I met him, he invited me to my his church. Now, mind you, I'm not talking about an assistant pastor. I'm not talking about an assistant to an assistant. I'm talking about the head pastor in charge of the church. This is his own church. This is his own ministry. And so I met him and he invited me to church. I didn't have a vehicle at that time. I did not know how to drive. And I met the pastor. So he started picking me and my son up every Sunday, every Wednesday for choir practice, every Wednesday night service. So I started attending his church and he started picking me up. So over time, he started making passes at me and he was much older than me. You guys, he was okay. Let's say I was 20. He was 40. Or 45 he was older than me so 
whatever my age was, he was 20 years plus over my age. So he started picking me up. He was nice. I enjoyed his church. I had left my husband due to dom domestic violence. I lived in a shelter. That's another to story time. I lived in a shelter and then I eventually got my own apartment, um, living on housing when I first uh, moved back to Houston and I left my husband. And so I met this man, this pastor during a time where I was healing, I was grieving and I was trying to get closer to God uh, or not get closer to God because I was close to God, but I was looking for direction from God and I was looking to continue to serve God just because I had left my husband. I wasn't looking to go into sin. I wasn't looking for another man. I wasn't looking to commit adultery because I was still married to my husband, even though I left my husband. Eventually I did file for divorce from my husband, but at that time I was still, I still, uh, was married to him. I don't know at the time when I met this man though, was I still married to my husband because I, I did file for a divorce and I did divorce my husband, but I can't remember what year I divorced him. So I might've been divorced from my husband already. I do not know. I can't remember. So anyway, I meet this man. I go to his church I joined the choir. I love, it's a little bitty T90 church. Like his brother went there, his sister went there, the choir director that he paid. And me and my son went there and maybe two or three more other people. And that was it. It was not more than 10 people, y'all. So, but it was a little small church and this man could preach. And he could sing really, really, really well. And he was a little short. <laughs> yeah, I don't like, I'm not into short men. I like tall, just what my preference is. I like tall, dark complected men. And so this man was short. He was shorter than me or my height. And I'm five, six. So he was shorter than me or my height. And he was older than me, but he was nice to me. He picked me up from church every Sunday. And like I say, then he started eventually making passes at me. Next thing you know, me and the preacher is in the bed. Me and the preacher is having sex. Outside of marriage, we not married. He talking about marriage. He want to get married. He... At the time when we was talking or met, he was going through a divorce from his wife. They were separated, but they were going through a divorce. And she kind of didn't want to give him a divorce because she still wanted him. Why? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but... They end up eventually getting a divorce. But at the time when we met, they were still married. And so this man is a preacher. Head pastor in charge of a church. He's still married, going through a divorce. And he meets me, invites me to church. Nothing wrong with him inviting me to church. But he never had to take it to another level. I never came on to him. I was never looking at him as anything other than a pastor. But he, in my opinion, which a lot of pastors do, they take that pa pastor jurial responsibilities to a level with females that it shouldn't go. Especially if you are a true Holy Ghost field pastor and you are serving God with all your heart. You shouldn't be lusting after women. You shouldn't be trying to get women into bed. You shouldn't be convincing women to sin against God. So eventually I did into, enter into a sexual relationship with him. 
because him and his wife was going through a divorce, she had jacked up his credit really, really, really bad. I'm 19, 2021. 20, I have good credit, but I don't really have no credit. So we start sleeping with each other. And if you guys do not know, I have always been a writer. I write. Uh, I've even written sermons. It's just what God give me, I write. And I'm just a writer at heart. And so I would write these songs. I was writing these sermons. And I am very in tuned and in touch with God. I have been saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost since I was 14 years old. Even if I enter into sin, it's something about my relationship with God that is going to check me and tell me this is wrong. You shouldn't be doing this. So I entered into the relationship with the man. He kept pursuing me and I ended up giving in. But over time, I was like, this is not right. Like, this is not what God wants. We are not being stewards over God. I would tell him, God don't want us being hypocrites. God don't want us standing in the pulpit on Sunday. And God don't want you standing in the pulpit on Sunday. And he don't want you uh preaching the word of god shouting singing speaking in tongues and then as soon as church is over which you got me up in the in in the bedroom with my legs up in the air like that's not what god want so i stayed in this relationship with this man i don't even know how long i don't know if it was a year two years i can't even remember how long it was and so eventually the man came to me and asked me, I'm skipping over a whole, maybe I shouldn't skip. I'm skipping over a whole bunch of stuff. But eventually, because his wife had his credit so jacked up, he, pastors like to show off a lot. Some pastors, they like to show off a lot. They like to have jewelry. They like to have bling bling. They like to get this for their pastor anniversary. They just like to show off a lot. So, he asked me, could I charge some jewelry for him from Gordon's Jewelers and that he would pay it off every month? And I was like, yeah, naive. I'm in love. I'm going to charge this stuff on this man's, on my credit card, and I'm going to let him pay it off every month. So we charged a whole bunch of jewelry on my credit card for him and he just was making the church think that he had bought it for himself even though he was paying the bill every month i guess he did buy it for himself but people don't know they just look at this person has this and they have that and they're not looking at that this person is going into debt for this and they're not really blessed to the extent where they have an overflow in their life where they could afford it. They're going into debt to pay something off just to front in front of people. That's what not that's not the type of person I am, y'all. So this pastor charged all this stuff up on my credit card and I was noticing things about him and I was like, Ugh, I don't want to be in this relationship no more. So one day, like, y'all, I hope y'all take this as warning signs, especially if you are a young female. I am attracted to older men, but I really don't know if that's a good thing because older men target younger women typically because they can control the younger woman and they can pull the wool over the younger woman's eyes because she is not that experienced and she not hip to the game. And so he was pulling the wool over my eyes, y'all. And he wanted to keep me in submission to him. He wanted to keep me needing him. Now this part right here, this is my opinion. This is my opinion. One day I called him 
And I was like, what you doing? And he was like, I'm not, I left work. I had an errand to run and I'm going back to work. And, but his job didn't know that he, he, I guess some people have a job where they can leave work anytime they want to. And the job won't even know that they left or whatever. So he had left work and I had called him and he had left work. So when I get home, y'all, my house has been broken into. My house been broken into. Somebody stole this. Somebody stole that. Somebody stole this. And then he came over and he was like, I'm going to buy, buy this for you. I'm going to replace this. I'm going to replace that. And I'm going to replace this. And so he came to the rescue and he replaced everything that needed that was stolen i feel like it was too convenient that my house had got broken into since i was no longer wanting to be in a relationship with him i feel like he did that so i could need him i feel like he broke into my apartment i feel like he did it intentionally so I could need him and I could depend on him. And he could show me, oh, no matter what happened to you in your life, I'm going to be there for you. And that's just something that I feel in my spirit that the man broke into my apartment. So he replaces things that I had. He was there for me. He was consoling and everything. So... I'm still going on in this relationship with him, but I'm still spirit, feeling spiritually that I'm sinning against God. I don't want to continue to sin. And so then I go to him and tell him, if you are, because he's steady talking about marriage, y'all. He finally gets a divorce from his wife. And he's asking me to marry him, but I'm seeing things about him that I don't even want him to be my husband. First of all, if you are a man of God and you are a pastor of a church and you're cheating and you're fooling around with a woman that wants to live a holy life and you're the one, you're the pastor. And every Sunday after church, y'all, I will be preaching to him. I will be telling him the word of God. I will be like, no, we don't need to do this. And, and, I mean, you're a preacher. I shouldn't be telling you that what you're doing is wrong. So it became too much for me. Like, you want to live in sin. I don't want to live in sin. <laughs>